It's another week of the Doc's Diagnosis presented by Centris Federal Credit Union. Remember, give this video a like. You can also leave a comment and also subscribe to the channel if you have time. Dr. Rob, uh, your report card came out and you're a little, little hard on the special teams for Nebraska and people really let you know about it, but for good reason, right? Well, I mean, you were hard on them for good reason. It, it was. So there's a couple of things here. Number one, you can have three great, big, long field goals that kept Nebraska in that game. That's that's the window dressing. That's the big stuff that makes stuff look good. You got to actually climb in through that window and look around to really tell what's going on inside here. Well, and there's a lot of issues that keep getting repeated here. Well, so, let's look at the window. So what I want people to look at here when you're watching on this kickoff return, we're gonna pause it about right there. And so what I want people to really hone in on right here is giant repeated mistakes. This is something we're seeing week after week. Now, I know it's two weeks in a row. It's cost Nebraska. You know, you could make the argument this cost Nebraska the game, but what I'm seeing here when I'm looking at this is, quite frankly, a special teams coach in Foley who I think is a great human being. I think he's a guy who works his ass off, tries hard, but the job is not getting done, and it's not getting done with bare bones fundamentals. This is stuff that should have been cleaned up after last week's game, and we're not seeing this getting cleaned up. And his angle of pursuit on this was horrible as well. And now we're gonna to go to the very first punt of the game. And, and you know what, I'm usually a big Bushini fan. This is a guy that just, I, I think for the most part, really does a nice job, but we're seeing a couple of these shank punts. We're right here on the 30 yard line. Um, it just this is unacceptable at this point. And it's the repeated mistakes is what's driving me nuts with Nebraska special teams right now. It's not the fact that you have a bad play here or a bad play there. It's repeated mistakes happening over and over again. These two plays, that kickoff return and this punt, you can make the argument it costs Nebraska the game because if they get better field position or they flip the field, and keep Ohio State pinned deeper on this first series, you kind of change the tone of that first quarter, and Nebraska potentially ends up sneaking in a field goal, sneaking in a touchdown, potentially wins the game. These You can make the arguments about the long field goals, but you can't change the fact that these repeated special teams mistakes, these fundamentals that should have been corrected, this is high school bullshit. This is stuff that should have been fixed a month ago. So things did get better for Nebraska after that first possession. And we're going to go to, I believe, the third quarter here. And this is really nice run. So Dowdell had a couple of really nice runs back to back here. This is one of those two. Um, I think this is actually the first of those two. So the thing that ends up happening here, two things. One, he hits this hole incredibly well. And you end up with a really nice seam here. Good job by the offensive line. Got Dowdell right here in the center. Kind of the thing that I want people to kind of key on on this play is Ohio State had two linebackers that they plugged right into the hole. I do think Ohio State saw this play coming. Travis, you and I were talking about it. it looked like it might have been a little bit of over-pursuit. The bigger thing is, is that I think it's Evans, 51, does a really nice job on this play. Um, he's right here. He basically pins off those two linebackers as they both come up. A nice job by him on this play to create that seam, essentially by forcing both of those linebackers out off to the left, and it gives Dowdell just enough space to squirt through and get the first down on that play. Now, Nebraska did take the lead in the third quarter. This is Dylan Riola with a nice pass. I think it's to Naor, isn't it? It is. Now, the thing, and they thought they scored. His, his shin was down. I'll give him that. That's it, it actually was on replay. It shouldn't have been a touchdown. They did score on the next play, however. And so the thing is, is that this is great blitz recognition by Riola. Now, I thought he did a much, much better job in this game in terms of reading the defenses, seeing the big picture, knowing where guys were at, would have liked to have seen more completions, would have liked to have seen more yardage. 
Um, but you got the blitzer coming here, and he kind of telegraphed this. He said he's coming from the get-go. You, when you have that set up, you're going to have what's called a hot read. Somebody's going to be coming free, not in double coverage. And that's what Ohio State wanted on Nayor on this one was double you, coverage. Man. The blitz comes. Nayor's going to break free. Raiola understood, and if you look, the ball's left his hand right here. He's already thrown that pass. He's not remotely open right now, but it's great recognition by Raiola, and knowing with this blitz coming that he's going to have this guy in, in single coverage, and they got a nice little pick run in here, by the way, too. But it gets him free, and it opens that up for him to make the catch and eventually set up the touchdown. Should have been a score on that. Boy, that shouldn't have been a score, but basically got him into that position. It was a big improvement over what we saw against Indiana last week. And that was really what I wanted to see this week was Nebraska stand up, a little bit of fight, and kind of fix what we saw broken last week against Indiana. And that's a good example of it on that play. Of course, gave people a lot of hope heading into the next game, which is going to be UCLA. Speaking of the Bruins, we're going to take a look at the Bruins tomorrow on another Doc's Diagnosis presented by Centris Federal Credit Union. See you tomorrow. Whether you're getting ready to buy your first home or your dream home, Centris can get you over the threshold. With low rates and an easy application process, our lenders can help you purchase a new home or refinance the one you already love. Apply online at centrisfcu.org.